This program is being sponsored by the partners and friends of Keith Butler Ministries. Today on Live Your Faith. Doubt, unbelief, is the opposite of knowing. Which is why, praise God, and of course this chapter is about faith. Verse 4, of course, the same chapter says, whatever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. The opposite of faith is doubt and unbelief. The way you get the victory, the way you have confidence or having confidence in God is faith. Seeking to reach the continents with the Word of God. Teaching the Word, doing the work, and touching the world. This is the Live Your Faith broadcast with Bishop Keith Butler. Praise God. You know, prayer is vital. Everyone knows that. We know we must pray. And in fact, the Bible tells us, or at least it seems to be, that God doesn't do anything on the earth unless someone prays, unless someone asks Him. But there are obstacles to prayer, things that will keep your prayer from working. And so we're going to begin to talk about those things, praise God, so you can avoid them and have the blessing that you get from prayer. Go back to Matthew 18, let's, and let's look at it. Now in Matthew 18, we left off with where two or three are gathered together in my authority, or in my onoma, rather here, love, in my onoma, my love, there am I in the midst of them, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him seven times? Amen. See, so you know the whole thing is about forgiveness. It ain't about casting out devils. It ain't about something else. It's about forgiveness. How often shall I forgive my brother? Seven times? It's about seven times in a day. Because Peter thinks, if I forgive you seven times in the same day, I know I don't done something. Right? Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen. Sure. Amen. Sure. Chief, come here for a second. <laughs> Amen. Seven times in a day. So, man, this guy, he don't done me wrong today. Oh, I forgive him. He forgive me. Twice. Oh. Now, most of us have a three strikes rule. <laughs> right? <laughs> three strikes and you out of here, baby, right? <laughs> the third one comes. Seven times. Seven. See? So Peter thought he was being, Peter thought he'd be spiritual, right? How often should I give my brother? Seven times. Note the subject. Right? Jesus stuns him. And Jesus says, no, no, 70 times seven. Now, I know you can count 490 times. But the, 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 the point that he's making that there is no place for you are not forgiven. That's the point, right? Then he goes on and gives, he illustrates the point. He says in verse 23, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which should take account of his servants. When it begun to reckon, one was brought unto him that owed him 10,000 talents. That's, that would be about $9 million. But for as much as he had not to pay, he couldn't pay the, the debt. His Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had in payment to be made. Because back then, you didn't have debt. You didn't have, well, I can uh, forget, have the debt forgiven and, or I can go to so-and-so company and they come up with some steam that is taking your money. We're going to consolidate all our debts into one. So what? You're still paying the debt. Amen. Then you paid them to have you put the get all together into one. What's the matter with y'all? Right. Lord, have mercy. W.C. Phil said a sucker's born every minute. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Well, then, uh-uh. See, if you didn't pay your debts, back in biblical times, they're going to get it. You go to jail, they take your wife, they take your kids. 
Think about that. Hmm? You think people pay their debts? Mm hmm. Well, no bankruptcy. Besides, it's wrong. That whole bankruptcy stuff is wrong anyway. Amen. It's legal. I ain't talking about legal. I'm talking about wrong. Amen. If me and her enter into a contract and she sells me goods and I promise to pay her $100 for the goods and I don't pay her, then I come along and say, I get a lawyer and I come along and I say, now, I will give you $50 for that. You're going to have to release me for the 50 I forced her to do that. Well, it's legal to do in America. That's right. I can do that. But she could have sold that $100 thing to somebody else for 100 right. You just deprived her of 50 bucks. That's it's right. called stealing. That's right. Amen. Amen. I mean, you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of things are legal. The Bible says in Romans, all things, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Not all things are right. Okay, amen? So don't just say, well, it's legal to do. Well, it's not the question. The question is, is it right to do? Now, you meddling now, Bishop. Now, you get on, you go, go, go back and teach the Bible and stop my mind your own business now. <laughs> anyway, this guy owes him $9 million. Well, Verse 26, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, or sought him there means, it doesn't mean that he worshipped him like God or something. Okay, he, he, he begged him. He said, Lord, have patience with me, and I'll pay you all. The Lord of that servant was moved with, say this word, compassion. underline the word compassion. He was moved with compassion and loosed him, and he forgave the debt, forgave the whole thing. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, which is about 15 bucks. Now he owed the king about nine million. Somebody owes him about $15. Okay. And he laid hands, he laid hands on him and took him by the throat and said, pay me what you owe me. And the fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me, I'll pay you all. Same thing he said to the king. And he would not, but went and cast him in the debtor's prison till he should pay the debt. And I always wondered how in the world you, you going to get the money to pay the debt if you're in prison. But they had, even in, back in English days, they had this. Amen. Praise God. Back in the days when America was founded, they had debtor's prison. Okay. Anyway, so when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, came and told their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you asked me. Should not you also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had compassion on thee? His Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. And then here's the punchline, Jesus said, so likewise, in the same way, shall my heavenly Father do to you if you from your heart forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Why? Because we're the ones who owe the nine million dollar debt to God. And what people do to us is 15 bucks. That's the point. And he's saying if we won't forgive the small stuff that happens with us, with people, think about the wages of sin is death. And Jesus said, the Father will do to you what you do to somebody else. I forgive everybody. Let it go. There's not a one of us in here has not been wronged by somebody. Anybody in here has been wronged by somebody before? Let me see your hand. Look around. Okay. Put your hand down. Anybody in, in here has not been Wrong by somebody, not a hand. Anybody in here ever wrong anybody before? Put your hand up. Look around. All of us is guilty. Look at your neighbor and say, you guilty. <laughs> no, come on, add to it. You guilty, you guilty. <laughs> every one of us is guilty. And every one of us is guilty and every one of us has been wrong. 
every one of us has put a $15 debt on somebody and every one of us have had a $15 put on us. And God said, but yeah, compared to what I did for you, it's not. Why we must, we must, we must forgive. Can I get three hallelujahs? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to Mark the 11 chapter. So the first obstacle to answered prayer is clearly this. God wants us to be in agreement. Amen. He wants us to operate with each other. Amen. In Mark, the 11th chapter, everyone knows, verse 24, therefore I say unto you what things whatever you desire when ye pray, Believe that you receive them and you shall have them and when you stand praying. Forgive if you have ought against any that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Boy, that last line. He said, now if you don't, I won't. Ouch. So we must forgive. I said we must forgive. So that's number one. Unforgiveness and strife because God needs us to have agreement for the power to work. So if you're the devil, what would you do? Cause strife. Any way you can, through people's mouths, actions, any kind of way you can do it to stop the Father's power. That's how it's done. Okay, amen. So don't allow yourself to be used as an instrument of the devil to stop the power. Amen. Here's number two obstacles. Turn to 1 John chapter 5. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Some people think, we think that operating in forgiveness is being weak. No, it's being smart. Amen. Amen. First John chapter five, doubt and unbelief is the second obstacle to answer prayer. Notice here, we begin reading in verse 14. And this is, I know we don't start a conversation with Ann, so I know you go home and read this. And this is the confidence, praise God. Parousia is the Greek word here. This is the boldness and the frankness that we have in God. That if we ask, 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 prayer, if we ask, what? Anything according to his what? Will. Word will mean his desire. You can find his will, you can find his desire in the word of God. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, and if we know. If who? If we know, if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the request or the petitions that we desire of him. Well, doubt, unbelief is the opposite of knowing. Which is why, praise God, and of course this chapter is about faith, Verse 4, of course, the same chapter says, whatever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. The opposite of faith is doubt and unbelief. The way you get the victory, the way you have confidence or having confidence in God is faith. But faith can only operate where the will of God is known. The will of God is found in the word of God. The weakness then, the weakness to this would be an individual not having knowledge of the word. That's why you're here. Amen. Turn to Romans chapter 14. <clears throat> We're talking about obstacles to answer prayer. I don't know about you. I like my prayers being answered. Amen. The 14th chapter of Romans. Let's read the 23rd verse. He that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is 
sin. With God it is. Whatever is not of faith is sin. The Greek, Greek word for faith is the word pistis, trust, confidence, reliance, belief, assurance. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Here, he's talking about people eating meat offered to idols, the whole context of it, okay, where you had the apostle Paul back then in, in uh, biblical times and in Paul's times, you had the and some of you are going to Israel with me in two weeks. Amen. I'm going to be taking you to a place where you can see this. Okay. But where they, they built these temples to these other gods. Right. But what you'd have uh, connected to the temple would be the very most finest restaurants in town. See. So they would take meat that was offered to the idols. And then take that meat and then take it to the restaurant and cook it and serve it. Right? And so there were some Christians saying, no, the meat, if you eat the meat, you have committed sin as heresy because that meat was offered to idols. Paul said, I'm a man of faith. When I pray over it, it's clean. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but then Paul went on to say, but if that's going to cause my brother to have a problem, I, he said, in this chapter, then I will not eat the meat in front of my brother. He didn't say he wouldn't eat the meat. He said, I just ain't going to eat it in front of him. If he's with me, we ain't eating that today. If he's with me, we ain't eating it. If he ain't with me, chow down. Right? He that doubteth is damned if he eat. So, so if he does something that crosses his conscience, okay, because even though it's not sin, to him it's sin. Get it? Okay, amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Whatsoever, but, but no, whatsoever is not a faith of sin. That would include prayer, or it wouldn't be whatsoever. In other words, prayer, unless we're talking about prayer of commitment and dedication, prayer requires faith. I want to use Jesus as an example. John chapter 12, Jesus is speaking in verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. What commandment did the Father who sent you give you, Jesus? What I should say and what I should speak. In other words, I don't even choose my own words. Okay. I don't speak unless I find out what I'm supposed to say. That's because of how powerful your words are. Amen. Right? I know, he said in verse 50, that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So, Jesus was even down to his words. He did not speak except he heard from the Father first. Instead of just speaking from his head or speaking from his emotions. How many, how many have spoken from your head and your emotions and got you in trouble? Right? St. John 14. Note what Jesus said in verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. So I only say what the Father says, and then the Father's the one who does the work. Now, in John 11, before Jesus made these statements, notice in John 11, he's going to do something in verse 4. Amen. Somebody who he loved died, name was Lazarus. In fact, we'll read verse 3. Therefore, Lazarus' sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. He did not say, God made him sick so he can get glory. God don't have to make people sick in order to get praise and honor. <laughs> he ain't a sick agent. But there is something Jesus is doing. Amen. Jesus said, this is an opportunity. Get it? This is an opportunity. The devil attacked Lazarus because of Lazarus' association with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, this is not under death. Note what he said. It ain't under death. Remember Jesus' words. I never say nothing else the Father told me. So the Father told him, this ain't under death. 
I'm going to get glory out of this. We're going to defeat the enemy right here. Amen. 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 What you say, you don't have to answer everything immediately. Amen. In fact, the best thing, when you are tempted to open your mouth, the best thing is to put your fist in it That's right. and wait and pray and let the Lord give you what to announce to the problem. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? Well, you know the story. His disciples, you know, um, well, let's read verse 6. So when he heard, therefore, that he was sick, Jesus stayed two days in the same place. He didn't even rush off. The Lord told him what the deal was going to be. The Father did. So Jesus was not in a hurry. It wasn't going to make any difference to him whether it was two days, four days, ten days, twenty days. If the Lord said it, that was enough for him. Amen. The Father does the work. You know the story. He tells his disciples, we're going, and, and they said, you know, uh, if we go, I mean, they're going to stone us. And, of course, the great faith man Thomas says, well, they're going to kill us if we go, so I, let's go die with them. <laughs> Thomas said. They finally get there. And then notice what Jesus said in verse 41. They took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He repeated what the Father said. Now that's, that's the best kind of praying. When you get a word from the Father, and then you just parrot back what he said to you. I thank you that you've already heard me. I know, that, know you hear me always. Because of these people who stand by, I said it, that they may believe that it sent me. Lazarus, come forth! And Lazarus came out bound, praise God, in grave clothes. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Oh, I love that. Last one, praise God. So number one of obstacles is unforgiveness and strife. Number two is doubt and unbelief. Turn to Hosea chapter four. Praise God. And let's close up with the last one. Hosea, Joel, Amos, chapter 4. <clears throat> now, the word of the Lord came unto the children of, of Israel. God's going to have a real problem with Israel because of what the ministers were doing and then the people. The ministers weren't believing the word, all sorts of stuff. Finding verse 4. Yet, lo, yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Excuse me. <clears throat> Therefore shall thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed. The word destroyed means cut off for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you. Amen. The last one is, amen, lack of knowledge. Especially among people of the just after the flesh, my race. Church is, church is, has been, and when I was a boy growing up, particularly, church was, was always about emotion. It was about entertainment and about emotion. I got the one amen in the front. <laughs> and, and some of y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. A lot of emotion, a lot of oh, hallelujah. The Lord knows you're down I'm sitting now, and He knows you're rising. And oh, ah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> right? Way down in Mississippi, my mama said, and talking about we was in Mississippi and what happened with the previous generation, and a lot of other stuff. None of that is Bible. Didn't do nothing for you. It didn't move your body, though, especially if they were very talented. And so we had a lot of talent, but not a lot of word. So the end result was we knew the stories of the Bible, but had no revelation of the Bible. So we were sick, broke, poor. Okay, amen. And destroyed for lack of knowledge. And in fact, when I grew up, there was no teaching in the pulpit. When I grew up, the only person that taught was in Sunday school. If you got up in the pulpit and tried to teach, they'd run you out. Okay, amen? They say you couldn't preach if you tried to teach. 
Let me see the hands. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Turn around. See, see, I'm not lying. Look. Right? <clears throat> and so, because of lack of knowledge, no information, then even when it came to issues like prayer, we canceled out our prayer because we didn't know the rules governing them. We didn't even know there were rules. We didn't know there were different kinds of prayer. All we knew was we pray, we hope we hit something. And if something good happened, praise God, but we would not know how to repeat it. All you need to do is ask Jesus into your heart. Romans 10, 9 says, if you will acknowledge with your mouth, Jesus as the highest authority in the earth, believe in your heart, God's raising from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Pray that prayer right now, he'll come into your heart, and you'll never be the same. Please visit KeithButler.org or call the number on the screen so that we can send you this very important booklet called where do I go from here? It contains a wealth of information that you will need now that you've decided to ask the Lord into your heart and continue your walk with God. Our prayer for you is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Praise God. The Bible said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And as you can see from our intro, we're ministering in Europe, we're ministering in Africa, many other places, praise God. We're taking the word of God, East Europe, West Europe, praise God. And you know, God wants everyone to hear the word. That happens because people partner with us. They become people who support what we do. And if you want to see the gospel go beyond just your neighborhood, praise God, and go to people around the world with the heart of God, then we want you to pray about being a partner with us here at Keith Butler Ministries. We want to thank you for your prayer support. And remember now, keep fighting the good fight of faith. The lives of many people are being changed dramatically through the works of Keith Butler Ministries. People who have never heard the message of faith preached are hungry for God's word. They're experiencing the manifestation of Holy Ghost power as they dare to take God at his word. How exciting to be a part of this. We invite you to become a partner with Keith Butler Ministries today as we work to fulfill the Lord's mandate to go into all nations and preach the gospel. Your life will be richly blessed as God continues to manifest his blessings in your life. Join today. Do you know exactly what prayer is and how to manifest God's will through prayer? In this series, Bishop Keith Butler explains how you have the authority to bring positive change to every area of your life through the effective use of prayer. Get today's message starting at just $3.99 on MP3, CD, DVD, and MP4. Or you can get the Art of Prayer ebook for only $4.99. Just visit KeithButler.org or call 1-888-909-WORD. Get connected. Check out our live stream, Church Online, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To get connected, go to KeithButler.org. This program was brought to you by the friends and partners of Keith Butler Ministries.